Hello everybody, thank you for being here this afternoon. Welcome to our program on networking and building connections. My name is Chris Egans. I'm the Career Development and Internship Specialist here in the College of Business. This program is one of our Belmont and Beyond series programs um, sponsored by the Career Development Center and the Office of Career and Professional Development. I have got the scanner. If you need convo credit or if you're here for class, make sure to get your card scanned. I'll be standing outside of this door after the presentation concludes. I'm very excited about the speaker that we have here today. She is the president and publisher of the Nashville Business Journal and has over 22 years in the media industry. The Nashville Business Journal provides local business news and connections through a weekly edition, NashvilleBusinessJournal.com, social media and events. If you're not aware of the Nashville Business Journal, have not read it yet, it is not too late. Get started now. It's going to be a great resource to you. It's something I read every day um, through the emails that come through. And um, it's a great way just to see headlines and keep up to date on what is going on in the Nashville business community. And she didn't even pay me for that plug. That was, that was genuine. <laughs> um, but she's been with the company for 21 years, previously working at the Milwaukee Business Journal as advertising director before relocating to Nashville in August of 2006. She serves on the board of the United Way, Center for Nonprofit Management, Business and Arts Council, and the American Heart Association. She's a graduate of the Leadership Nashville Class of 2009 and is a member of the Downtown Rotary and Lipscomb University's Business Leadership Council. She has three children, ages 20, 18, and 16, and lives in Brentwood. In her spare time, she enjoys running, painting, and listening to her vinyl record collection. Please join me in welcoming Kate Herman. Well, thank you for having me this afternoon, and I am really impressed by you all, because you're here. It is impressive with the snow day, and I know you all had classes today, but um, I appreciate you being here, and we're going to, you'll see this is, I'm going to ask you to be fairly interactive as we do this this afternoon, so I can keep it all awake. I mean, it is 4 o'clock, right? It's on snow day. All right. So, we are going to talk about networking, and first off, I have a couple questions to ask you. I want to know, where do you go to network? As a college student, what are you doing right now? What's that? Yes, please. Coffee shops. Okay, coffee shops. Why are you going to coffee shops to network? Because I enjoy Who is there to network with? Okay, so people your age, good. Where else do you network? Yes. Okay, on social media and LinkedIn, and why do you do that? Okay, so looking for internships and jobs on social media. Good. Where else? this seminar, I have done this, for over 100 groups 
of business people. And I can tell you there are a lot of business people that say ones and twos. Mm -hmm. They have to network for business. They don't like it. Everybody finds it highly uncomfortable. So the reason we put together the seminar is that we hold a lot of events for business people. And what we found at those business events was that business people were sitting together and talking with people that they knew when they also know that talking with people they don't know are going to get them more connections and help their career and help their business. And yet it's still a really difficult thing to do. Okay? So we're going to talk today about why, as a college student, you can start thinking about how using networking as a tool can be probably the strongest thing you can do for your career moving forward because it's going to help you meet people. Okay? All right. So. I went into a little bit about why this seminar, but one thing we know is a business publication. We write about business people all the time. The reason we write stories about business people is so that they can meet each other. Because the more people meet each other, the more they're going to do business, and it helps the entire economy. We know at the Business Journal that people want to meet more people, right? People run companies, so they want to create those relationships. We know that companies don't do business with each other. It's the people within the companies that do business with each other. And people will hire and do business with people they like. So that's what we're going to talk about today, is how you can network and network successfully to create more relationships and, quite frankly, to get more people to like you. Because those are the type of people that people want to hire. And if you're a good communicator and you're able to network, that is, a, that is a desirable communication skill that businesses want as you move forward. The other thing, too, is you are your own brand. Have you heard that? Right? How you represent yourself says something about you in everything that you do. I interview a lot of people. It makes a difference what they're wearing, what they do in the interview. Okay, I cut an interview off because somebody kept looking at their phone. Like, no. Uh -uh. So you are your own brand. What you do and how you carry yourself says something about you, and that's really, really important. All right, so your goal when you're networking, first of all, let's pick something, okay? Let's, we're going to pick a pretend place that you're going to go network. You have found out that somebody is holding a, um, a, uh, a mixer because they have a bunch of internships that are open in your um, industry that you want to get an internship for, okay? And it's a mixer. There's going to be some business people there from the company and some other college students, okay? So when you're networking, you have a goal. You're going to be going to this mixer. Your goal ultimately is to make a meaningful connection <coughs> and to make yourself memorable. And what do I mean by that? I go to a lot of networking things with business people. There are some mornings, the next morning, that I pull out business cards from my purse and I look at them and I think, oh my gosh, who was this person? I don't remember. And you don't want that to happen to you. When you're out in the business world, when you're interviewing, whatever the case may be, you want people to remember you. They may not, you know, there, there may not be a reason for you to have a relationship right now, but you do want them to think of you down the road when something opens up. <coughs> they think, oh my gosh, I met that Belmont student. Who was that? I should give him a call. We now have this position open, okay? So you want to make yourself memorable. We're gonna talk about how to do that today. It is not to show them how smart you are. The more you think about, I have to show them how smart I am, the more you miss the whole point. Because the whole point is to know how to communicate and be natural in every situation, right? Because if you can do that, that is smart. And I remember when I first got into the workforce, when I first was here, I'm like, oh, I have to prove that I've learned all this and I've done all this. That's not what it is. Okay. Because if you can communicate and if you can create a memorable connection with somebody, they'll already think you're smart because of that. Okay. All right, 
right, so you're going to this mixer. You want to make yourself memorable because there's internship positions available and you want yourself to stand out. There's some things you should think about beforehand. One is you want to have three to five discussion questions, right? You're going to be mingling around um, with people that work at this company, and you want to be able to have a discussion with them. So you want three to five discussion questions. You also want to know your 10-second elevator speech. Have you ever heard of what elevator speech? You know, before? Okay, 10 seconds. Again, it's a quick statement about who you are, what your goal is that you're trying to accomplish so that they know, but real quick. Okay. You want to eat before. If they're having food, Food is great. Matter of fact, when I do this seminar and I say, why do you go to events? Some people say, well, because I want to meet a wife. So this does work in social situations. Okay? Because I want to meet a wife or because the food's good. And that's great if that's your goal. But if your goal is to meet people so that you can make a connection that will help you, down the road you don't want to be so concentrating on the food that you mess that up. Okay? So eat before. All right. We're going to talk first about discussion questions. Discussion questions are questions that you have in your mind that you've prepared that you're going to talk about before you go to this event. A lot of people go into an event cold. They don't think about this ahead of time. And have you ever been stuck in a situation where you're talking to somebody and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what else to say. Okay, that's just dropped off. I'm clueless. Okay, and it's uncomfortable. Right? All right, so we don't want that. So we're going to develop three to five discussion questions. Here, you'll have them when you leave. There are different buckets that you can develop discussion questions from, okay? One bucket is the most obvious, which is the situation you're in. Oh, are you here for the internship too? Why do you want to do that? Where did you go to school, right? It's the situation um, that you're currently in. You can talk about professional or a history of somebody. Well, how long have you been in whatever the case may be, some association? Um, talk a little bit about where they grew up, okay? So their background. Another bucket is news content, something that's happening in the news. Oh, uh, we have the Super Bowl coming up. Who do you think is going to win? You can carry the gamut from any of that. Is Trump going to do it? Right? But politics is tricky. <laughs> All right, news content. Advice is a great bucket. I use advice all the time when I'm preparing my discussion questions. I had this happen to me this week. Has, I, has that ever happened to you? What would you do in that situation? So that would be a type of an advice question. Okay. Your goal here is to create questions that elicit a discussion that people do not have every day. If I would be going to a business networking event tonight, and I would be talking to somebody and I talk to them about the weather, I don't think they'd remember me the next morning. Right, because that's what everybody's gonna talk about. And I can tell you in business, there's a couple things that are um, used again and again as discussion, discussion topics that are overused. I mean, one is the weather, it's very surface. One is if you start talking about the economy, we haven't, trust me, we've there, but uh, it's when you're in a social situation, it gets very dry and nobody remembers it after they've had that discussion. So what you want to do is find some topics that you can talk about that elicit a new type of discussion where you walk away and you go, you know what, that was a really cool discussion with that person. I really enjoyed it and I'm going to remember them next time because of X. Okay. All right. This is where it's interactive. You are going to write and make up two discussion questions right now. You want to make them memorable or to be able to elicit a memorable conversation, okay? And use our situation as an example. You're trying to get an internship and you're at a mixer right now with people from a company, okay? You can work in a group. Like, I don't care. Like, work together, whatever. Just come up with two questions. Work, okay, work your part. So. All right, I'll give you a few minutes to do that.
travel to an event? Maybe you would ask, do you prefer flying or driving? Okay. All right. Talk about travel, modes of transportation. Good. It's a little different, right? Anybody else? All right, those were some really great questions. I encourage you to have in your head kind of a list that you use for any time you're in a social situation. I'm gonna give you some more um, moving forward, but anytime you're in a business or social situation. Here are a couple more that you can consider, and all of yours were very good, so. What's your favorite app? I've actually used this in business because it has legs. People, uh, if we share apps, um, will actually follow up with me later if it's somebody I didn't know and be like, oh, I just downloaded that. Uh, just happened to be recently, matter of fact, with Waze. You guys use Waze? What hobbies do you have? What do you do outside work? It's a big one. Are you using social media right now and how does it work for you? That also gives you an indication of how you should or should not follow up with them. I can tell you there's a lot of CEOs of companies that are not on social media. Generally, somebody else in the company does that. If you could choose any job besides what you're doing, what would you choose? Gets into kind of a different conversation, right? You can learn a little bit about that. Do you read? What's a good book you've read, read lately? Movie, TV shows. This is all the stuff that we talk about at business, taking this seriously. <laughs> we do business too, but. Okay. Who else should you talk to or meet? Who else do they recommend that you should talk to or follow up with? Particularly if they can make that connection for you. Okay. I was at an event. Um, one time we do best of the bar awards in which we award attorneys in the city, the best attorneys, and I was having, a, we were having a discussion, there were five of us standing there, four attorneys and myself, um, talking about the economy. And I noticed that two of them, watch body language, right? Two of them were staring off into space, not even in the conversation. It's tired after a long business day, right? And two were kind of talking about the economy and all and I said, you know what, I'm doing my first triathlon tomorrow and I have to swim in the Cumberland River. Do you have any advice for me? <laughs> and immediately, they all honed in on the conversation and we had a really big conversation about exercising, about pollution in the Cumberland River, about how do you stay motivated, how do you eat healthy, it went on and on. A year later, one of those attorneys emailed me, asked me to go to lunch to talk about business, and the first thing he said when we sat down was, so how did your triathlon go? <laughs> That's what you want, right? So you want to have a conversation with somebody where they can learn a little bit about you. It doesn't necessarily have to be business related, but they can find out more about you so that you can create that relationship, whether it's now or down the road, okay? So that's the goal, you want to be memorable after you've had that conversation. All right, so you're going to this event and you have your two to three questions, you're ready. You're prepared with your two to three questions. Here's some other things to think about. If you get a name tag, you're supposed to put it on the right side of your body. Do you know why? Like mine is, you know, the theory behind that? Yeah, yeah, the theory is, and don't live or die by this. And it's really funny when I do this one for business folks, they get a name tag, all of them are switching it, like half of them don't have it on the right side, and that's okay. But the thought process is when you go to shake hands, the eye travels up to your shoulder and they'll remember your name better. Okay? Easier to read. You can stand by the name tag table if they have a name tag table there, kind of see who's coming. Is there anybody you should meet? Particularly if there's company names on the, the uh, name tags, which we always put on any event we do so that people can see what companies people are from. Be early, it's very much easier to be in a room and have people coming in to approach you than you, we've all had this feeling where you walk into a full room of people that you don't know, okay? Sets you up to be a little bit more comfortable. You can have your business card. How many of you will have business cards or do now? 
Okay, great. You want to have your business cards in hand. And I'm just going to pull out my business card holder to show you this. Does anybody have a business card holder like that? Okay, some of you do. All right. If you get a business card, where do you put it? Put it in your wallet? Okay. Shirt pocket. Okay, shirt pocket. I recommend you put it in a spot where your business cards are not. Okay? There'll be a lot of people that put them behind their business cards and you don't realize that you've run out. Unless you want to follow up later, which we'll talk about, so you don't want to forget about that. I put them by my cell phone in my purse when I get them so I can take them out and make sure I follow up and do whatever follow up I need to do. Okay, so keep them separated. The other thing is, uh, it's interesting, I find more men do not have business cards than women. I think it's because you all need man bags or something. Uh, so make sure you have enough when you're out and you're networking. People do want to have that information to be able to follow up with you. And then you can go to an event and work with a buddy. It makes it more comfortable, but you do have to be careful that you don't end up just talking with each other, right? And that you actually work the room and help each other out, but it can help a lot. So keep that in mind. Okay, so how do you break into a group? Have you ever done this? You've been in a social situation, you don't know anybody, everybody else is talking in small groups and you're not, and you don't know how to break into a group. What you will hear a lot for networking things is find the other single person who also doesn't have somebody to network with. That only works for so long. And you might get stuck, it's kind of a crutch, talking with that other person who has nobody else to talk to, and then you're not meeting as many people as you could. So it is really a skill to practice and get used to breaking into a group of people that are already talking so that you can meet more people exponentially, okay? And there is a trick to it. One thing is to read body language. If people are very, if there's a group of a group of people and you know that they're talking very closely, for me it's, are they doing a business deal? Do they know each other really, really well? Or if you can tell that they're really close buds and you're just gonna be breaking in into a conversation, it's gonna be too difficult, do not do that. But if you find people casually talking, it's a, it's a great thing to be able to break in and talk with them. So here's how you do that. One thing is you look for a gap. And what do I mean by that? If you have two people talking, there's a gap on either side of those two people. It's pretty easy to break, it's easier to break into that group. Then, if it's three people, it's a closed circle, depending upon how they're standing. So just watch for a gap in that group. Then, you make eye contact with one person. And it sounds like the goofiest thing, but I'll tell you, I do this all the time. So you sidle up to the group. I'm gonna make it highly uncomfortable for you. You sidle up to the group and you stand there. You guys are talking and I stand there until I see one of them make eye contact with me. At that point, the first thing I do then is put my hand out. So you've made eye contact or I put my hand out. It actually physically draws me into the circle to be able to talk, okay? I always remember this when I'm out networking, if somebody's standing there looking and trying to make eye contact with me, I make sure I pull them into the group. So I think of it on the other side as well, okay? Now there are times where I walk up to a group and I'm standing there, there's somebody I know I wanna to talk to. They're having a discussion, they have not made eye contact, and I either have to decide at that point, am I gonna be stubborn and wait, which I'm pretty stubborn, and just stand there and wait, or am I gonna to move to another group and then come back and talk with other people and then move back, okay? So you can stand there and wait for that eye contact and then put out your hand to shake it. Have your line that you say when you come into the group. Hi, I don't think we've met. Do you mind if I join your group? Hi, I'm here to meet more people and I'm not sure that we've ever talked. Do you mind if I come talk with you? Okay, so just whatever the standard line is. And use that when you come in. And I talked a little bit about single people and you can seek them out, but I encourage you to get comfortable with breaking into a group. Any questions on that? Have you ever had to do that? Is this completely foreign to you? Are you now not looking forward to it at all? 
questions on that? Okay, the line I couldn't help but over here. I don't know, at first I want to say no, that's not a good line because that makes it seem like you were eavesdropping, but then again, you're at an event and if they're talking, that might, I think you kind of have to play it by, you know, judge it, use your best judgment. Um, eavesdropping in general, you probably don't want to do. But, so it kind of depends on the situation. I have done that, like if people are obnoxiously loud and they're talking about something, then I'll be like, Oh, hey, I just heard you, you know, so it, it does depend on the situation. So, yeah? So if you do get stuck with a single person mm -hmm. and you don't really want to talk to him or her, Ooh, that's nice. how do you attend it not properly? Yes, we'll talk about that next, how to break out group. Great question, because you do want to break out. So I want to stay there. Any other questions on breaking in? Okay. This is not easy to do. Again, the people in the business community find this very difficult to do. The thing to keep in mind is if you're in a business situation, if you are buying for an internship, anything like that, if you can do this, people will notice you because everybody understands how difficult it is. Okay? Unless you're just naturally gregarious and there are some people that are. All right, okay, so now you're in a group. You got in, good job. You have your three to five discussion questions, so you're gonna ask those, okay? <coughs> how often should you be talking and how often should you be listening, percentage-wise? Who said 50-50? That is it, right on the nose, okay? You will hear a lot, particularly if you hear any sales training or anything like that, that you have to just listen, be a good listener. You really want it 50-50. The reason being is it is a tennis match, okay? You ask a question, they answer it. They share about themselves, then they ask a question. You answer it, you share about themselves, and it goes back and forth. I had somebody walk up to me after a seminar and say, oh my gosh, I network all the time and I never figured out what was wrong and now you just solved it for me. I went to events, I asked all the questions, I never told anything about myself. I would, go to, I would see somebody that I had met previously, they wouldn't remember me at all. And she said it was because I never talked about myself. And she found it frustrating and she couldn't figure out why nobody remembered her. The other thing too, there are CEOs of companies who do who just naturally cannot network. And I have had conversations with them in which I ask a question, they answer it, and they never ask a question back because they don't know the art of networking, they don't know how to do it, whatever the case may be. You know what I do? I answer my own question. I ask another question, they answer it. They don't know how to lob it back. I answer my own question, so I keep up the whole conversation. The CEO of my company is like that. So I've had to sit with him at dinners and hold the whole conversation up. But he knows me, okay? So keep that in mind too. Sometimes it's all up to you, okay. Be yourself. I love quirky people. I love learning about people. I love people who ask questions, who tell me about themselves, right? I want to know who you are when I'm talking to you. That's what makes networking fun. So don't be afraid to be yourself and show that. Respond, share about you. Okay, humor is great unless you cross the line, okay? So humor is a really, really good thing. But when in doubt, leave it out. Okay, don't say it. Have you ever been talking with someone and they're looking over your shoulder and their eyes are wandering the whole back of the room behind you? Ever have that happen? Okay, that is a sign of distrust. If you do that, pay attention to it and concentrate on stopping. It can be like an ADD trait or whatever. So, but yeah, but just be careful if you do that because that's untrustworthy. You want to make sure you concentrate on the person when they're talking. 
If somebody is doing that to you, how do you feel? Pretty crummy, right? Like, what are they looking for? Do they even care about me? Okay. So just watch the note that I'm wondering. And then if you read anything on networking, it's all over the board on how long do you stay in a conversation. I say five to ten minutes-ish if you've had a meaningful conversation. So if you've been able to use one of your questions, you've talked about something that's interesting, you're kind of having fun, then it's time to leave. Leave while the getting's good. Okay, so we'll talk about that next. All right, how to break out of a group. Obviously, you want to wait for a natural break in the conversation. And sometimes there's a natural break that just happens. In other words, uh, the dynamics of the group change. Somebody comes in, they've entered. It's a great time for you to leave then. But most of the time, it's not, uh, it, something doesn't happen, so you want to move on. You have your exit line that you use every time, and your out is your business card, and that's why it's kind of nice to have a business card. If you're in a social situation, you don't have a business card, you're gonna have to come up with something else. But, it was so nice to meet you, can I have your card? It's kind of a sign of respect, you wanna keep that relationship going? Have a nice night, okay? I know you need to meet more people, I don't wanna dominate your time. Do you have a business card? Was nice to meet you, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go refresh my drink, go to the restroom, whatever the case may be. If you say this, actually do that. <laughs> It'd be much better to practice other ways to get out of a group where you don't have to. Good. And I have people, again, business folks that have said, oh, I pretend that my wife just called me and that I have to step out of her mind. Okay, you need to practice some other things here so that you don't do that. So have your line, use your business card. Or if you don't have a business card, just have your line. Again, I can tell you that I value people who have this skill. You think you're being rude by cutting off the, situ by cutting off the conversation and leaving? It's actually the opposite. Somebody who has this down and can do this naturally, I am really, really impressed because it's that hard to do. <coughs> it's just a difficult skill. So, and you do get more used to it the more you do it. So practicing it. Any questions on breaking out of a group? Yes. What do you do when somebody like latches onto you and kind of follows you around all night without yeah. being like, please go? Yes. No. Okay. So if they latched onto you, one thing you can do, um, especially if I'm scanning with one person and you just don't want to bail on them, is, hey, would you like to go meet some more people? I mean, why don't you come along with me and let's meet with another group, and then maybe. You can Kind of get unattached. Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> Any other questions on breaking out the group? It is also a skill if you can introduce other people. So make any introductions if somebody walks up. People want to be connected. All right. A meaningful connection is if they remember you the next day, you've been successful then, okay? You have a meaningful conversation. And then there's follow-up to do. You can send a note and make it memorable. Refer to something that you talked about in your conversation in case they did forget about you, then they might pull out, oh yeah, this was so-and-so, I can't remember that. I remember talking again, that was a sure person, okay? You can send an article. I have people send me articles on whatever we talked about. If we ended up talking about dog training, I've gotten articles on, hey, I got that I saw this article on dog training. Thanks so much to you. So nice to meet you. Hope this is helpful. Thought of you. Okay? Again, making it memorable. There's somebody in the business community who goes around, only certain people can do this, but she pulls it off. She takes photos wherever she goes with people. She'll take her camera and she'll be like, hey, get together. She then posts it on her Facebook page that night, tags everybody, it goes to her business Facebook page, and you're always referred back to her business because she does that. It's brilliant. Okay? So if you can find something like that that's connecting, and I know it sounds cheesy, she has the personality where it's not cheesy, it's the weirdest thing, but if you, got, if you, if you, if you could find something like that, do it, right? You're really memorable then. Uh, how about sending a book? 
a business book. There are people that buy books in bulk and then send them after they've met people, to important people that they've met. You can request a meeting, okay? People do want to meet people. People do want to meet you. It is hard to find good talent right now. And so I want to meet more college students. I want to meet people who are smart and who get it, okay? And who are gonna follow up and wanna meet with me, okay? So that's a great thing to request a meeting. And then just a word on social media, which I mentioned before, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'll meet a lot of people who then want to, um, you know, link with me on LinkedIn, which is fine, but that doesn't make them memorable. It's just another LinkedIn request, you know, so. So the note's memorable. My gosh, leaving a message, a thank you on a phone, that's like, went by way of the dinosaur at this point. So that's something, something different. You all are probably using things I'm not even aware of. You're so tech savvy. Afterwards, I got this email after I did this one time. Thank you for the, your networking expertise yesterday, networking for new business. I shared your notes with my office. Also, now I'm interested in participating in this year's Music City Triathlon. Even sent a photo, right? Looking forward to your daily emails. Great follow-up, memorable. Okay. A little bit about the National Business Journal. How many of you are familiar with us? Okay. We write about national business, but we also have 43 power properties if you're looking to get jobs in other cities. Um, we are online at nationalbusinessjournal.com. For instance, we have Atlanta Business Chronicle, whatever uh, city you might be looking in. I can tell you that people looking for jobs now have started to first look for companies that they know are good and they work it backwards. Instead of looking for the position, they look for the company and they work everything they can about that company to meet other people within that company that can help connect them to whoever the hiring person is. And the more that I interview people and they come in and say, you know what, I just want to work for the National Business Journal because and they're passionate about my company, goes a really, really long way, and I don't see that very often. So knowing the company is really important and knowing good companies to work for and working it that way. So using um, our website, that's our website, which has uh, business news. You can search for companies on there. Um, we also have different awards. You can find out best in business awards. Companies that are growing often are hiring. So you can start studying that way to find out which companies would be good companies for you to, um, to uh, interview with. We have an email that goes out in the morning and afternoon with the latest business news in case you really want to stay up to date, and those are free. And then also you can set up a free newsletter where you get um, those emails from different cities in case you want to start studying different city companies um, and use it that way. We also feature people on the move, people that are moving within companies, so that you can see which type of companies are promoting um, and do a little bit more homework that way. And then we have lots of events and programs in which we're um, bringing people together to network um, because it is all about connections and those are just some of them that uh, you're welcome as well to come to those. So. Any questions on networking or anything So I've been wanting to get involved with some young professional groups, but I wasn't sure if I could do that as a college student. Yes. Yes, yes okay. you can, for sure. Yeah. I like it when I see college students out and about in networking groups. So. And you can start with chambers. You know, Chris, you're part of you do things with the chamber. They have a young professional group. Um, anything we do, I do this networking, center, networking um, seminar in our office. And then afterwards, normally what I do is I have people in practice. We won't do that today, but I make people practice and practice getting in groups and getting out. I have people and college students that come repeatedly to that because they can keep meeting people as they do that practice session. So um, just, yeah, think of different things that you can go to. It's huge. And again, if I meet you, I'm like, okay, that person's out and they get it because that's what business is about. So, so 
very impressive. Um, going back to the follow up, you know, you go to a networking event, you meet a bunch of people. Um, how do you feel about uh, text? You know, contacting them back. Is Texting? Too informal? That's, or? Yeah, too informal. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was just saying, because the younger generation has to see how we can. I would say right now an email is the way to go, yes. Now whether that's going to change in the future, that might be different. And if, like within my office, we're texting each other all the time. So we're using text, we don't use it in that way like to set appointments or to communicate with people outside the office, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, the more immediate, the better. But don't be afraid if three weeks have gone by and you haven't done anything and then you are. Sometimes I've done that and I've been like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I forgot, but I didn't, I, I really wanted to get something out to you, or not, I forgot, it, but I'm delayed or whatever. Um, but I really want to get something out to you and still do it. Still be memorable. You can tie that back. And to piggyback off of his even, um, do you want to keep making that connection? Like, do you want to keep in contact with that person, or do you just kind of let it go afterwards? And how do you go about that, I guess? Um, yeah, that's a good question. And that's where staying up to date on different information and kind of bringing in, staying connected with them, either by having a cup of coffee, if that's possible, um, and just following up. I think it's a great thing to do. I still have people that will call me occasionally. For instance, we've had interns um, in our office, and now they're looking for jobs. They will still stay in touch with me and, and be like, hey, have you heard of this company? Would that be a good one to do? I think that's awesome. So um, if you need help with something, if you need advice, you can stay in touch that way. Hey, I'm doing this. Would you mind giving me a little advice? This is where I'm at right now. And it just helps them know where you are kind of along your
because at some point you may need to know somebody in that company and you can search the company name and know that you met them and where you met them and use that as a reference to follow up however long or later, like to year or whatever it is. So I think it's always good to have those contacts and know who they are and where you met them. Any other questions? Thank you. Give yourself a round of applause.